Good evening, everyone. It's wine o'clock. Tonight's video, I'm not reviewing a wine. I'm here to tell you all about closures. What it is, stoppers, all these different things. What is the difference between them? Give you a little bit of an insight into what stops the air getting into your wine. So I'm gonna put a couple of these bottles down and I'm gonna focus on these three to start with. So with this one, Chateau Umziat, this was the Assyrtico that I opened and uh, reviewed the other night. And as you can see, this is what they class as a plastic closure. And you can see that this part went into the bottle and this part was at the very, very top of the bottle. And you can brand these and they're perfectly good and they expand out well and they keep an awful lot of the air from getting into the wine. So the next one, this is from Doña Paula. Now, this is a combination of lots and lots of different bits. It's a similar closure to this particular one. Uh, it's what they call an anomacork. So, and as you can see, it interacts with the wine as well. And it acts in the same way that it expands out to keep the uh, the cork tight into the bottle and then um, works in conjunction with the wine. Now, this one, this is from Chateau Cassara uh, in the Lebanon. And this is a natural extract from the cork tree. This is a solid piece of cork. There is a problem with cork because the, in the past and um, certainly going forward, there's been an awful lot of shortages of cork because of various different diseases that have gone into the cork trees, which has driven up the prices of the cork and made them rarer. And also because they do work in harmony with the wine, but they also sometimes can taint the wine with a little nasty thing called TCA, which is basically what turns the wine and makes the wine in the industry terms, it's a corked wine. Now corked wine doesn't mean there's little bits of cork floating around in your wine. That's not cork wine at all. That's just where the cork itself maybe got a little bit brittle and it's got broken off. In addition to that, you have something called a Stelvin closure. Now, a Stelvin closure isn't a screw cap. Do you see the difference here? So a screw cap, it, and this is on there, uh, some white wine vinegar. This is just the top here, and you've got this tiny little seal on the bottom. And the way you open that is by grabbing it and twisting it. With a Stelvin closure, it's completely different. It's got this much, much deeper seal down the bottom here, and you can't actually open it by twisting it like that. You need to open it and twist it like this. So let's reveal what makes a Stelvin closure so amazing. Don't know if you can see in there, there's a little disc. I'm actually going to see if I can dig this disc out. So, well, I am going to dig it out so I can show you it and show you how amazing a Stelvin closure is. Whoops, <laughs> dropped half of it. So as we can see, see my head. Ah. This a lovely little disc sits on the top of the bottle and that creates an impermeable barrier between the wine and the air. Now what happens is once air gets in to the bottle, if you open the bottle, allow it to breathe as they say, What's happening is the air is turning it and it's turning it into vinegar, which is basically wine that's gone off, been attacked by the air. Now, when they're making wine, obviously all the wine is filled up to about here in the top. And then they put an inert gas on the top. It's just shot in there quickly and then sealed. And that inert gas sits in there and protects the wine so that air doesn't get to it. The difficulty is when you have corks like this, is that if, in particular case of a natural cork, if the cork dries out, if the wine is not kept in contact with it and the bottle's not lying on its side, the air can get in, the inert gas can get out, and then that will turn the wine as well. Now, another closure I'm just gonna show you here. This, look at this lovely one. This is a glass stopper closure, and that's very tight, let me tell you. These don't come out that easily. Um, this is in a particular rosé, which is quite delicious, but as long as you just pop it the right way, you should have no problem. And again, that's incredibly good because it keeps, you can see in there, the inert gas that's in there actually just protecting the wine itself. The inert gas doesn't give any flavour or any um, a different aroma to the wine at all. It's just there to protect the wine and keep the air out. Now, air is the thing that basically cripples it. Now, when you're actually opened a wine and you're looking to get air to it, to aerate it, the best thing to do, in my opinion, decant it. You don't need a big posh decanter or anything like that. Just a jug, just pour it in, mix it all around, pour it back and forth. 
that will get air to the wine, which will accelerate the aging process, if you want, and which will accelerate it in terms of exposing it to the air, which will allow the, the wine itself to express itself a little bit more. Now, this is really good if you've got a young wine and you want to get the air to it to just soften the tannins. But it's also good if you have an older wine where you need to get a little bit of air to it. But don't air it for too long. If you've got a particularly old wine, you really don't want that much air contact to it because it's actually going to turn the wine. So it's not a good thing. So hopefully you've learned Lots of things tonight about stelving closures and closures and everything. And leave me a comment below if you like what you, you saw tonight and uh, if you agree with me. If there are other closures, such as the crown caps that are used um, in different um, other beers and things, but also the, the mushroom-type closures that are used in sparkling wines. So hopefully you've enjoyed tonight. Cheers.